So we just continue where we left off last time. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can retime instances directly in Solaris. If you didn't watch part number one of our Solaris instancing tutorial series, I would recommend that you go back and watch it if you're interested in it. If you already know how to use the instancer in Solaris and you just want to know how to retime it, then you can stick with this tutorial. Let's take a quick look what we have set up in the last tutorial. In the last tutorial, we created a pretty basic setup here. Um, we just used three animated USD files that I saved to disk. We referenced these into Solaris and then we used the instancer. We created point cloud here on our instancer or inside our instancer, I should say. Then we created some distribution index attribute. We created pscale attribute to influence our instances. And we created some colors to colorize the instances. So that's what we have here. If I switch to this XPU for now, you see here we have our scene right now. So these instances all have an animation, but right now they are animating on all at the same time, which is, of course, pretty boring. Let me switch back to Houdini GL for now. And I do not want to use my material libraries for now, so I just created two of them. One of them is just visualizing the distribution, and the other one is visualizing the color attribute that we created inside the point cloud. So maybe let's use this one. This is a little bit better for now, not this one. And let me mention, of course, you can download the project file on Patreon. Now, let's take a look how we can retime instances. There is actually a retime instances node, so let's add this in. And the first thing that I have to mention is that this really only works with USDs that are saved to disk. There is an option to use a cache, and it should work, and it actually does in a few pod, but I could not get it to render correctly. So this was my problem when I did some tests. There is this cache option here. So for example, if you have a scenario where you created your animations in a sub create, and then you want to instance this in Site Solaris, you would have to put in a cache at some point, and usually you put it after the instancer like this, then you can change it to cache cooked frames or cache all frames. And then this retimer should work. But as I said, in my tests, I only could get it to work in the viewport. It worked with the renderer, but I was not able to render it out. So I don't know whether I was too stupid or whether there is some kind of a bug. Right now, I would recommend that you only use this if you have USDs, animated USDs or simulated USDs that are saved to disk and that you load in with reference nodes. And now let me show you how this works. So the retime instances, first of all, you have to set it to the right type. If you set your instancer to point instances, then this setting is all right. If you change this, for example, to reference or something else, then you may have to change the retime instances here to native instances. That's important. Now you want to specify your instances that should be influenced by this retime node. And we can do it like this. We just go to our instancer and drag this directly in here. And now we have to tell it which instances you should affect. And you can do this by a square bracket and then you could type in a number. For example, if I type in a number one here now, and let's zoom out here, we will probably not find this one. But if I now scroll, one of them should actually do something. I cannot really see it. So maybe we type in 50, maybe we are lucky and see it now. No, but this is the, this is the challenge here. If you can see the one that is actually moving, I can't, doesn't matter. If we put in a star here to affect all, then it should work. And now you see, I can scroll the global frame offset and now I can offset my animation using this slider. But this is, of course, not what we want to do. We want to use a variable um, to, or an attribute, I should say, to offset these frames. And again, we have to create this attribute on the point cloud. So let's go into our point instancer and let's 
pin this again here so that we see our instances. And I will just turn this off for a moment here. And let's go into our point cloud. You can, of course, create many different techniques to create this offset attribute. In my case, I will just use a simple noise again because this is yeah, just the easiest way for me to create this offset attribute. If you have mobs installed, you could use a mobs fall off or whatever. You know, you can do with a warp. You know, there are so many possibilities here. But I will just use an attribute adjust float again. I really like this node because you have a lot of control and can do cool things. And let me actually rename these so that we know what we are doing here. This is the set index. These are from the first part. Um, this is the set color attribute that I just used to colorize these things then. We do not use this color right now, um, so we do not see it here. And here I have the attribute that just float, and this is my set frame of set node. Now, in this one here, I want to create an attribute that is called frame of set. This can be a float attribute. That's okay. And we can say, I want to set it always. And we don't want to have a constant. I want it to be based on a noise here. So let's set this up like this. And the minimum value should be zero. That's fine. And the maximum value depends on how much you want to offset your frames. So let me show you quickly how this is actually calculated from the retime node. Therefore, again, we go to the documentation. And there is a formula which shows pretty well how this is calculated. It's somewhere down here. Let me search. Yeah, here it is. So this, if you use frame offset and time scale, for now we are only dealing with the frame offset. Later on, I will also show you time scale, but for now we'll just deal with the frame offset and you see what this does. It says that it is $f, so the current frame, plus the frame offset, plus the value of the frame offset attribute. And then later on, you can divide the result of this by the time scale, but that's something that we will take a look later. For now, we will just specify a time offset. And let's say I want the time offset to be approximately one second for now. So I put in 25. I set my FPS to 25. So 25 is one second for me. And now I can just create a my noise. And of course, I cannot see it now, so I will use a color now for a moment. And let's actually unpin this because I want to see what's going on here. And I will add in another color noise or another color node and set this to ramp from attribute. And the attribute should be my frame offset, just that I see what I'm doing. And I will change the frame range from 0 to 25. Now I can just see the size here. So it's not pretty, it's not really good. So let's maybe, no, let's just do it like this. We'll just take another preset here. So we have some presets. This one is a little bit better. And now I will just darken this here a bit. So let's go to the background and set it to dark gray for now. I think that this is better. Yeah, now I can see it a little bit better what's going on here and how I can distribute my frame offset. Now, for my taste, the size is too big. So let's just make it a bit smaller. Then we have more variation in here. So something like that. And that's fine for now. I could go in here and turn down the roughness maybe a bit. Let's take a look what this does. Yeah, let's turn down the roughness a tiny bit. Good, and let's see what this will do now. So this colorizing is only a visualizer, so this will have no effect on our actual retiming now. And now it should already work. But what you see now is, if we scroll through our timeline, there is something going on. But on frame number zero, there are, of course, a few fully animated. And that was what I showed you before. It calculates it current frame plus the frame offset. So some of them are already at frame offset 25. So they are already more or less fully scaled. So I will just put in here minus 25 just to counteract this. And now all of them should be gone. Now, the retime instances, and I have to show you this, we can take a look at the scene graph tree, actually converts your instancer, your nice point instancer, into another 
mode. You see that now I have all of these instances again in here as separate instances so that he can offset it. So this can get very slow. So this is something that I really have to mention. Um, it can handle quite a number of objects, but it can get very slow. So you will not get a good feedback or a good playback in your, in your preview window. So if I take a look here at that, with a number of 500, it still works okay, as you can see here. And you can already see that now my noise is working. So at some point on the object, these are growing on earlier and at the other points, they are growing on later. Of course, now I have my, my scale that is influencing these. And to make this maybe a bit more obvious, I will turn this off for a moment. So let's go in here and just turn off this set P scale. Then they're all scaled the same way. And now we can see this a little bit better, what this retimer is doing. You see some of them are now starting to grow and yeah, the other ones are offset. So that is how this basic retiming works. And actually I think it's a pretty cool workflow and sometimes very useful, but of course it has its limits and can be sometimes a little bit tricky to handle, especially if you have a really, really big amount of objects. Okay, now, what I do not like is they are nicely offset, but they grow with exactly the same speed. And that's where this time scale comes in very handy. It is turned off by default, but we can turn it on. And again, if you want to use that, you need to create an attribute, a time scale attribute. The time scale attribute also is a float. So let's go into our instance here again, and let's create this also on our points, on our point cloud. And I actually can use the same method here. I could use uh, noise again. So we'll just duplicate this for now and call this set time scale. But again, you can use a warp or you can use whatever you want, uh, mobs fall off or whatever. And this time I want to create an attribute that is called time scale. And the most important thing here is definitely the range. So if you remember the formula that I showed you before, the calculation is like this. You have the current frame plus the frame offset value. And then the result of this is divided by this time scale. That means we want to have a value that are not too crazy. So in my case, I want to put the values to about 0 0.5 and 1.5. And let's take a look at this now. I will change the element size here even smaller so that we have a lot of variation here. So let's make this a bit smaller. And let me actually quickly use this one here to visualize my time scale. So let's quickly do that. Time scale, we just have to change the range here, otherwise it won't work. Yep. And now let's just make this smaller. The smaller this is, the more variation I have in my speed. That's exactly what I want. So this looks quite good. Okay, now we can go back here. And now let's see whether we can see this by playing it back in the viewport. It's definitely probably more obvious if we use, if you use a flipbook. Yeah, because this is so slow, then you cannot really see this effect. Let me create a quick flip book, but to do that, I have to add in a camera, otherwise we can get some stretched results. So let's add in a quick camera. Let's set this camera up quickly so that we have something that we can use for our flip book, something like that. Okay, that's fine. And now we'll create a flip book and I will be back when this is done. Okay, so the flipbook is nearly ready. So let's take a look at this. And you see that we now have also some offsets in the speed here. So now the growing animation is way more organic. And that's exactly what the time scale is adding now. It just adds a bit more variation. Okay, so to create the final result, I just will add in the P scale again, the set scale. And now all of these things work together. So now I have my P 
p-scale and I have my retiming of my simulation and I have my offset and this is our final result. And now, of course, you could come in here and you could add some materials. You can add in more instances by just increasing the point count of our scatter and line node. Uh, if you want to take a look at the final result that I showed you as a preview, then you can just download the project files. There is the whole setup with materials, with lights, with camera, with render settings. And if you want to learn the basics of Solaris, then I would recommend that you watch my introduction to Solaris tutorial that is also available on Patreon and on YouTube. So I thank you very much for your support and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.